I know, no, I know, I never hear. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Saturday morning, y'all, so you know it's time for another live edition of The Extra Point. We was doing a little pregame and a little here we go. Who sang that song, Tasha? You remember? I don't know. It was one of those groups that was kind of like R&B, but kind of like a one-hit R&B. Oh, okay. I know they used to say a little dab, but do ya? Um, or, or whatever they said right there. Okay, no, all right. No, we no. got Mr. PL Culture coming to you live from the DFW. We have Miss Tasha T. Sizzle coming to you live from the Dominican Republic. We got a lot of football and basketball to talk to you about. We're going to talk about your favorite teams. Some of your not so favorite teams if you're a Cowboys fan like me because we're going to talk about Tasha's 49ers. But before we do any of that, we have to get a word from our sponsor. We are sponsored by May Jane's Coffee. That's M-A-E-J-A-N-E-S coffee.com. Again, guys, just keep going to her website and looking at her Instagram, which is May Jane's Coffee. I think it's May Jane's Coffee Company. But anyway, um, you can go on her social media for updates about the company what's going on i'm gonna go open my window because i'm dark i can't even see myself all right and while she does that i will also let you know that this show is probably brought to you by wolverine comics tx again that's wolverine comics tx um the sole proprietor is mr michael hasso um and uh make sure you check that out on instagram that's j-a-s-s-o michael hasso wolverine's comics tx for all of your comic book needs and just as we were talking about our sponsor chimes in. Right. Get on it, Denise. Denise, I don't first, have the number either. First of all, I just told your Uncle Paul that it was too, it was so late last night that I did not text you and send you a text. She so didn't text you, me either. First of all, Android, I can't text you. You got a WhatsApp that you refuse to go on. Yeah, I'm airing out all the dirty laundry today. Wow, you didn't put no gain in there, nothing. You just threw it right in the washing machine. Okay, all right. Well, make sure you give that baby your number because uh, we can have her looking for her mama. You know how we do with our mamas. We, when we want mama, we got to be able to get mama on the jack. All right, now, before we get started, we want to thank everyone that came out and hung out with us on our first annual draft party on Thursday night. It was a gas. We thank everyone for their comments, uh, both about the selections and about the selection attire of the draftees. Congratulations to all the draftees that's gone in the first two rounds. But now we're entering day three of the draft. And one thing that I will give the NFL credit for was that these teams really did a pump fake on these mock draft experts. All those mock drafts that we read for months leading up to the draft, they ain't worth the paper that's printed out for those uh, NCAA college brackets. The only thing we knew for sure was who was going number one. Everything else was pretty much a crap shoot. But T-Sizzle, out of all of the surprises that we saw on Thursday and Friday, what was the biggest surprise to you? I'll give you a couple of options. Was it Houston nabbing the second and third pick, grabbing C.J. Stroud and Will Anderson Jr.? Was it Will Levis falling all the way to the second round with his poor family sitting in the green room? Or, or was it Jalen Carter, Mr. DUI himself, falling number nine to the Eagles who moved up to get him? Um, I'm actually going to go with the Texans because – the Texans did a pump fake on all of us. Yes, they did. <laughs> yes, because they did. I don't, but I mean, after sitting down and listening the day after the draft to some of the different sports talk shows, and they were saying how they felt sorry for Will Levis, which of course I did not. Of course you didn't. I didn't feel sorry for him. But they were saying that they felt like the Texans were using him as bait to really deflect from what they really had planned. Right. Because right. after they took, we, we didn't expect them to take CJ Stroud. No, not at all. Because Everything was telling us that they were taking Will Levis. And I'm thinking whoever's in their ears, giving them some bad advice. Cause that right. ain't it dog. That's not right. it. And when the, when the clock, when the third pick was in and the clock kept going lower and lower and we kept saying it's the pick in. And I told you to you and Mike, I said, it's a trade. Right, you did. I was not expecting that. Right, right. Like, who gets the second and third overall pick in one draft? I I was not expecting that. I'm not so surprised about Carter, even though uh, he's a baller. We know that. But every now and then when you have things like that off the field issues, they tend to loom over your head. And I think that's why he – and I was expecting him to drop a little – 
so I'm not really surprised about that. And like I said, I was not sold on Will Levis. Will Levis was my number four quarterback out of all the top four. And so you went surprised. fourth out of the top four. Right. So I'm not surprised about, about that. Good job by you on that as well, because the um, that's the toughest thing to predict is whether these quarterbacks are actually wound up on draft day. So you did call that good job by you. Now let's play a little thumbs up, thumbs down. Speaking of quarterbacks, I'm going to go through the list of the five quarterbacks that were highly touted coming out uh, of the draft. And you tell me if you like the situation that they found themselves in with a thumbs up or thumbs down. Let's start with Bryce Young in Carolina. You give that situation a thumbs up or a thumbs down for Mr. Young? I give it a, I give it a thumbs up, but okay. I just hope that they coach to his skill. You know, you guys drafted him. Y'all knew he was barely six foot tall. Y'all right. know he's under 200 pounds. Right. Because he didn't weigh in at his pro day. A lot of people don't know that because the, I said that water weight wore off from the NFL combine. And the combine, right. he right. weighed in just like right at 200, a little over. Right. But he didn't weigh in at his pro day at Alabama. So that kind of tells you something. Mm -hmm. um, I just hope that they work with him. It, I don't. We don't know yet if he's going to be the day one starter. He's better than what they have on paper. He's better right. than what they currently have. Right. But we never know. So I'm okay with that pick. Okay. All right. Let's move on to C.J. Stroud to number two to Houston. You like that that fit? Yes. Normally, I would be against you having a rookie quarterback as your go to, but it's something. Even though he went to that school, right. Uh, it's something special about him. And you do have a good offensive coordinator who is of the Shanahan tree who can work. Cause CJ Stroud can actually throw. He's not necessarily. Right. That's an excellent point. He actually it can be stand in the pocket. Right. So that's kind of goes along that Shanahan offense where, you know, we all know my 49ers, they, they can put anybody back there and have some sort of success until last, you know, if last year didn't prove it to you. I don't know what will. Right. So I'm, I'm okay. I'm giving that one a thumbs up too. Okay. Now here's an interesting one here. Anthony Richardson to Indianapolis. Now we saw Indianapolis go through five quarterbacks in the last six years. Do you think this one will have staying power? I hope it does because he was my favorite quarterback going in. He just has so much. He has like, I mean, literally that's, that's a Cam Newton body right. with a, a real throwing quarterback's arm. I wouldn't necessarily start him immediately. Right, right. Um, just to he give him some, to develop. yeah, just give him some time to fine tune those mechanics. Mm -hmm. Not saying if a hey, if, if the quarterback you have in uh, is sucking and the Colts are just going down, give the boy a chance to let him get in there. But if it's an offensive line issue, I don't want him in there. Even though he's a big boy. You don't want him to get the Cam Newton treatment where he's getting knocked over, getting right. hit late and not getting flags, which can, you know. Right, 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 right. And we know that, that, that we don't get the benefit of those flags like some others. Right. And what another thing I was going to say with his style of play by them being in a dome, I know they don't ne necessarily have that turf, but they don't have natural grass. Von Miller did a commercial with one of the, grass treatment people and the NFL didn't want to air it during the draft. Oh, wow. Cause it was about t safety for the NFL players and the turf conditions with right. them playing on that turf because you get more injuries. So with him being the type of quarterback, he is, I, I want him to learn. I want him to, you know, to be able to adapt. And I mean, which I don't think he'll have a problem doing, right. but I want him to be able to adapt to everything that is indie. I don't want him thrown because I want him to succeed. I don't want him just thrown out there. I want him to succeed, of course, as a Titans fan. I don't want the Colts to necessarily succeed, but they do have a key weapon that could help him. I think you can take the old school Steve McNair approach with Richardson when you have a running back like Jonathan Taylor. Hand that ball off. Hand right. that ball off. See if you can drop a safety down to stop the run, and that, that'll free up some of the looks that he's getting because we know he had some accuracy issues in Florida um, while being a small sample size. So I agree with you totally. I think he has the greatest upside. I think in five years, um, if if he's cultivated and developed the right way, then he'll be by far the best quarterback and the longest-lasting quarterback out of all those that were taken. It hurts my heart that he went to Indy, um, <laughs> but I think that's a great that's a great move for the coach, especially if you're looking for somebody that, that's not 38 years old, like those old quarterbacks they were recycling the last few years. 
All right. right. Now, Hicken Hooker, um, he went to Detroit. Now, Detroit has Jared Goff now, but Jared Goff isn't necessarily a world beater. Do you like Hendon Hooker going to the Lions, who seems to be on the rise? I do, because everything they have going on, he's not going to play this year. Right. He is going to still – Which know, is important, has, which is important right. for his development, right. He needs – he's going to rehab that knee. So, if they have a crappy season under Jared Goff – I mean, Jared Goff is not a terrible quarterback. No, he, he was above average last year. He did quite well for them. Right, he's not a terrible quarterback. So, I think that's – perfect for Hendon Hooker to be in that position where he's not under pressure to come in. He's not under pressure to play. That gives him time to rehab. He's in the facility. He can get whatever he needs. Well, I don't know because, you know, when, when old Calvin Johnson was there, he had an issue with the way they wanted to treat him up there. So let's right. just hope that they taking care of the boy, when he, the young man, when he's up there. Right. All right. And last but certainly not least, which will transition us into the Tennessee Titans, the Titans uh, selecting Will Levis, moving up in the second round to grab him with a 33rd overall pick. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm, I mean, I'm still. Right, Shamika, hold on. I'm doing the same thing right now, Shamika. I'm like, what is she going to say? <laughs> I'm still going to give it a thumbs down. Simply because it's almost as if you're getting the same type of quarterback, in my opinion. As as as, as started Ryan Tannehill is what you're saying, right? Okay. Now, I do think he may be a slight upgrade from Tannehill, but you gonna go with y'all already out on Malik Willis, and then y'all gonna get the the quarterback who dropped all the way down and think he's supposed to be the next thing coming. Right now. And, when you got Josh Dobbs, who played phenomenally. He did. He did. The, the, the one thing that, that worried me about the, the Will Levis pick to Tennessee is the, was he's not very mobile, like you said. And, and and if you have an offensive line that's not very good, you want a quarterback that can at least escape the first person, maybe make somebody miss and um, – and and make a play down the field right. And they did trade up. They right. traded up to get the dude with only six picks in the draft. So that was a concern to me. And another thing that was a concern to me, and I'm not even being petty when I say this. I'm being dead serious when I say this as a diehard Titans fan. The the mayonnaise in the in the coffee, the 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 shirtless selfies, which you eat the banana without the peeling. It, it, it makes me. Are you trying to be uh, 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 go viral? Are you are you locked in here? Like, are you going into a situation saying, hey, I'm going to get Tannehill up out the paint. I'm not waiting no year. I'm about to beat him in, in training camp and take over this franchise like a top five quarterback would do where he was projected to go. Or are you looking for likes and clicks? Are you focused? I mean, when he was doing that stuff, he was still in college, you know, so maybe he was looking for an NIL deal with with uh, with mayonnaise or something. Who, with Hillman's. Right, or with Hellman's or, or with the Chiquita Banana people. I, who, right. who knows? But as somebody said. But, and there's that too. Uh, it don't take me that good. Right, he was chomping that mug down like like one uh, to who? <laughs> a, a three. <laughs> but, but like someone said, he couldn't make it in the Big Ten. He goes to the SEC. Which yeah, the all, SEC is better than the Big Ten, though. Which we all say is, is the better conference, but he was at Kentucky. Even though Kentucky has been looking pretty good here in the latter few years, but they had a slight decline. Uh, I don't know, man. Did the right, Titans they, give Malik a fair shot to show what he can do? Because he was thrown into the fire last year without right. the proper preparation. Do you agree right. with Mr. Glenn? Yeah, I do. I do, and because I don't think Malik Willis is that bad. No, but they, he played good in the preseason. But they did the same thing with him, went up and got Malik Willis. Who's in charge of – it's it's just like when they got the new GM, the old GM said, here, here go the book right here. Then right, he, like he left all of his game seven. notes. But, but see, Tasha, I want to pick up right there because now I'm about to go on a rant. You just walked me into a rant. Now, let me give a quick recap to the people who didn't see who the Titans selected. Uh, with the 11th overall pick, they took offensive tackle Peter Skaronski out of Northwestern. We needed a tackle. You needed to help up front. It wasn't a sexy pick, but it was a need-based pick. I'm okay with that. You put, Okay, as we said, you picked up Will Levis in the second round. 
if nothing else, he should be better. He should be able to beat out Malik Willis so the Titans have a viable backup if Tannehill goes down again. When he goes down again, because he's getting more and more injured. But I'm not sure he can beat out Malik Willis. Well, that's yet to be seen. Um, but we don't know that. We don't know that. But their pick last night, the third pick. All right, let me say my prayer real quick, because this is a day show. This ain't the night show. It's running back Tajay Spears out of Tulane. They took him in the third round. First of all, you have no wide receiver depth. Second of all, you if you didn't trade Derrick Henry, ride him to the wheels fall off like you've been doing. You picked up Hassan Haskins as a backup running back last year in the fourth or fifth round. Now you turn around and pick up this guy from Tulane in the third round. Yes, he's had some explosiveness, but Tasha, guess what else he doesn't have? The man don't have an ACL in one of his legs. Now, what did I tell you about shopping out the Dennis Can Owl Tennessee if you, Titans? If you, turn, if you turn to page seven, this no, is no, 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 no. The man don't have an ACL. The, then you took him in the third round. The, uh, Tasha, I'm going to read off these wide receivers. Anybody in the comments, anybody watching right now, you tell me if you'd be able to spot this person out in Walmart today, we have Traylon Burks. You wouldn't recognize him in, in, in CVS. Kyle Phillips. Is he black or white? I don't know because you got exactly. You, you, you don't even know if he's black or white. Um, Mason Kinsley. Is he black or white? That last name kind of leans toward. Okay, you're right there, but you wouldn't notice him in, in, in KFC. Then no. last, uh, Nick Westbrook Akini. Those are the wide receivers. Right. Russell Westbrook. What? Right. Now, those, right, Shamika, right. Now, you have those as your wide receivers, but you take a running back in the third round with no ACL. Somebody please explain this to me. Now, Let me close my window because they're drilling next door. Okay. Now, now I'll, allow me to wax poetic for just a second. You're the Tennessee Titans. You were one of the most injured teams in the league last year as far as having players on injured reserve. Year after year after year, you go and you draft these players for a quote-unquote value that are not healthy coming into your camp. Now, this guy here, they say that he's ready to go, but the man doesn't have an ACL, which caused him to drop significantly. Now, we all know that, that running back, is a position that's not of need on, on the same level as a wide receiver, a tight end, uh, or, or any uh, side of the ball on the front end, the defensive front, offensive front. You don't have the luxury to make a luxury pick right now, Tennessee. Where the hell is the wide receiver? Tasha, help me out here. Right. Just, you know, wait, hold on, right, Martrice. It's not a great value. It's great value from Walmart. Good job by you, Trice. You got these GV players. What the hell is going on? Uh, Tosh, quit laughing and help me out here. I just told you, if you turn to page seven in your draft booklet, the Denny Cans are right here. <laughs> That's exactly what the old GM did to the new GM, who I'm surprised. He's, he was came from the 49ers. No, this I'm is sorry. Vrabel. This is Vrabel. This is not on Rand Carthon. I'm sorry. This is on Mike Vrabel. Rand Carthon wasn't shopping out the Denny Can out in San Francisco. Look at the no, 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 no. We, we, we wouldn't allow that there. We don't allow that there. What what, what does that mean, Tasha? What, what, what does that mean? That receiver court, right. Now, who the hell is Will Levis supposed to throw the ball to? The, uh, the opposite team, like Tannehill does. Oh, that's true. We dropped the shopping at the pick and spin, right. You couldn't even get nobody out the HEB, nothing. I'm just saying. There were wide receivers on the board that, that we did not take. Maybe they felt like they were going to drop to the fourth round. I don't know. But this is what makes Tennessee Titans fans mad. This is what keeps us in that middle-of-the-road purgatory where you're not good enough to chase a ring and you're not bad enough to get the number one overall pick. Because of SH, you know what, like this. I am very frustrated with this pick. I'm sorry, Tasha. Um, let me move on because I, I can get stuck there all day. I'm very disappointed. In the Titans' first two days, after no, the disastrous seven-game losing streak, this is how we kind of come up. Okay, I'm all right with the tackle, but what good is it, is it to block if the receivers ain't getting open? Let me let me go. Now, the Cowboys, America's team. What is 
Especially with their love affair with the University of Michigan. Let me show my let Michigan ring. Y'all, y'all see that Michigan ring right there? I mean, you know, baby, it is what it is. Happy graduation day to all the upcoming alumni at the University of Michigan. Shouts out to the University of Michigan. Now, they took two Michigan players with their first two picks, and I believe they hit on both of them. Shouts out to the Cowboys. First, they take Mozzie Smith. The, um, in the first round. Now, I know a lot of people on Twitter were getting on the Cowboys about Mozzie Smith because they saw the half sack that he had last year. Well, let me explain to you something about Harbaugh's defense and the way that Mozzie Smith was used. Mozzie Smith was used as a space eater. He was the Haloni Nada on the Ravens defense that, all, that ate up blocks that allowed the, the Bull Wears and the Ray Lewis's to get to the quarterback. The Aiden Hutchinson's had one had single coverage on the edges because of Amazi Smith eating up two, three blocks in the middle. He's a run stuffer. He usually came off the field on third downs when they were put in their nickel packages and their dime packages. That was more of a scheme thing than it was a, a athletic um, deficiency thing with Amazi Smith. So they got him in the, in, in the first round. In the second round, they – oh, my God. Michael Harris, happy belated birthday to you, bro. But I think he looks a little bit like Jake Locker. <laughs> And Jack, listen, maybe y'all can bring back Derek Mason, one of my favorite Titans of all time. Stop that. But um, in the second round, <laughs> um, they picked up uh, Shoemaker from from the uh, from the Wolverines. Uh, I'm sorry, a tight end. Now y'all saw the game last year where he roasted and feasted on Ohio. He's a good inline blocker. He can catch. He can make moves in the open field. And I think he'll be a suitable replacement for Dalton Schultz. So. To, if you're the Cowboys, I know you like to thumb your nose up at Michigan because everybody at work yesterday was saying, but what about TCU? What about TCU? What about TCU? So they didn't score 50 points on that defense. We had three pick sixes. <laughs> Tasha, are you are you impressed with what the Cowboys were able to, to, to do this weekend? I'm actually impressed, and I'm shocked because uh, – Maisie's grandparents were big time civil rights leaders. And y'all know old Gerald, he don't like nobody that's, you know, fight the power. You sure so, can't. Don't fight too hard for the power. Now, now see, this is the, old, the stuff that you now, get I mean, on, that on the shows extra you that they were actually looking at the talent aspect of it. Because, I mean, he didn't have any off the field issues, but right. they were strictly looking at talent and what they need. Right. Right. And, and when you couple, um, Mozzie Smith with uh, D Law, with Michael Parsons, 11 from heaven, with that front four. You know, they were a tick below Philadelphia and San Francisco, in my opinion, as far as the best defense in the league. Mozzie Smith being able to stop that run will allow your boy Michael to get off on third downs a lot more than he did last year. And I'm going to tell y'all now, I'm, I'm, I'm calling it. If the, Ford, if the Cowboys do not make it, to the NFC Championship or possibly the Super Bowl, it is all because of the offense. I'm, I'm, wow. I'm calling it now. So you're saying it's all because of Dak is what you're saying? There would be no clanger, clanger, slander. Well, I'm no, the thing is, I love Dak. I'm just saying, you, so you're saying that, that it will fall on the shoulders of Dak because they do have such a talented defense is what you're saying. I mean, that's what they're going to say is, is Dak's fault. With all that defense you bringing in there, stopping play. I mean, because that 49er game was literally head to head. It was. What made the difference? That defense causing those turnovers and, and the offense turning the ball over and not getting sevens and settling for threes. Now, speaking of threes – your transition game was on point this morning, by the way, T-Sizzle. Let's go to your 49ers because three is the magic number. You didn't have a first round or second round pick. You had three third round picks. And in one of those picks, you selected, let's keep this thing going, University of Michigan <laughs> kicker Jake Moody, who was the best kicker in the league last year. You watched every Michigan game. You know how important he was to their success. This is what I thought when I saw that pick. Damn. You know how few holes you have on your roster to be able to grab a kicker in the third round? When we already have the most efficient, one of the most efficient kickers in the league. Tasha. Gold-blooded. Gold-blooded. Like, it's got to be a very comfortable position to be sitting in on draft weekend when normally the, the, the doldrums of the league are trying to get better. When you have a team that was 
really a a a, a, a sting ner a nerve sting away from going to the Super Bowl. I think they would have beat the Eagles. Sorry, Mike. I think they would have beat the Eagles if, if Purdy would have stayed healthy. He didn't get to play yeah. really any of the game. Right. Um, you get to go and get one of the most efficient kickers in college football when you play a lot of close games the way your team is designed to do. Um, Tasha, how are you feeling about your 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 team? You loving it? I'm just glad that they got – what's the boy out of uh, Penn State? Oh, because, yeah, uh, Jair Brown, the safety. Because we lack – oh, my God. Our secondary – is literally the Achilles heel of our defense. And you I asked CeeDee Lamb who got off in that game last year. Right. Right. I mean, I think even of our whole team, because like I said earlier, we can put anybody in a QB and be efficient. It Damn, doesn't what does that out. feel like? I mean, it doesn't work out a lot of times when we really need a top tier quarterback, but I mean, it, it gets us there. 28 we, teams will trade places with the 49ers roster. Yes. Yes. We needed secondary help so bad. And we also drafted the tight end. I don't really know his name. We need we needed a backup to kill his him. His name is Cameron Latu, and he was a very good, uh, efficient tight end for Alabama, who didn't right. get a lot of touches. But when you got first class wide receivers and running backs, the, the tight end won't get featured as much. But he does have talent. I'm happy with with everything that we drafted because we we address kind of what we needed, which is that <coughs> secondary. <coughs> a couple more pieces. Um, on the defense, uh, get us some offense, you know, maybe a few offensive pieces. We need we need a few line, you know, a couple of people on the line. Uh, I'm I'm happy so far, but it's kind of hard when your team is already kind of stacked. Right. To go out and get, you know, that gives you the option to, to kind of play with some things and just say, hey, well, let, let's get this piece, let's get that piece. Well, think about it. With so many games being one possession games in the NFL, to get a, a, a chain-moving tight end who can come in for George Kittle, who has missed a lot of time the last two years, you got a safety now where you can start rolling some of your coverages. Hopefully he can be a run stopper as well because at Penn State he did do that. He helped stop the run for a team that gave up the fewest yards per rush. I'm sick of this. I'm, you know what? Let's move on. Damn, San Francisco. Come on, Cowboys. Let's get it together. All right. Um. Now, let's, let's transition into the NBA. We talked a lot of uh, football the last couple of shows. And let's start with one LeBron James. Don't I finna say, you bet, best not put that on your head as hard as you was rooting for, for the Grizz. Now, I want to come to you on this, Tasha, because, look, I'm here. I'm not handing out crowns today. I'm handing out flowers. You said on the eve of game one, the Saturday before game one, three – Two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago, when this series first started, you said, I got the Grizzlies are the better team, but if street clothes shows up, y'all are in trouble. Well, street clothes showed up, and we're on a flight back to Memphis and not to, to play a game seven. He was dominant. He was he was phenomenal. He was getting blocks. He was chasing blocks. He was changing shots. He was a force on offense and defense. And he played through nicks and bruises. Tasha, you ready to take your victory lap? I mean, I've always said that AD was the key. Whether he was good or bad, he was he was he was the key to them winning because as great as LeBron James is, as good as hard that I mean, the way he has he's I mean, for him to redo his body, I'm too big. I need to you know slim down, trim right. down. So right. I can have longevity in this. Right. Everything that LeBron James has done in his career, everything that he is doing now, he can't do it by himself. He can. He can. And so, AD stepped up to that spot. AD was the alpha in this series. Right. It was not and LeBron that, James. And that's what LeBron needed. Right. He needed someone right. that can go out there. Let me let me sit back and be the facilitator. You right. Know, Get this. Let right. me let me chill. If I if hey if I got it, I got it. If not, here you go, big fella. You take it. Right. And and, and the, the the goon squad agrees. AD was a savage to use Stephanie's word. He was a savage. He he turned Jaron Jackson Jr. into a pedestrian. And this man is a defensive player of the year, getting bammed on last night, dunked on, getting his shot thrown out into to Jack Nicholson catching the ball in the, in the front row. Like I turned that game off at halftime. They lost by 40 in a closeout game. 
LeBron James ain't playing no games. If you had, if you were on the team flight back to Memphis with the Grizzlies and they gave you the intercom for you to give them a pep talk or, or to let them know what it get get off your chest, whatever they need to, to know going into the offseason, what would you tell them, Tasha? And, and, and don't mince words. We I mean, that tough love right now. The thing is, by the games coming on at 1130 damn near here. Right. I really I've only seen two games. But you followed them all throughout the year and the, and the storylines and everything that's gone on on and off the court with this team, with the trash talking and, and the gun and the IG and everything that went on. I mean, again, the trash talking like what, what's his name? The one we always joke on. You know, he's talking about, oh, unless you putting 40 up oh, against Oh, Dylan me. Brooks, yeah. Yeah, Dylan and then Brooks. there's somebody that was like, yeah, but the whole team put 40 on you. You know, you had a team, you know. Well, he rallied the, he rallied the team around LeBron because they knew he was getting old. They know that they had to step up their right. game, and they did. But I do think having gold tooth, which is Steven Adams, having gold tooth out, and what's the other guy that was injured? Oh, Brandon Clark. I really think having them out – had they been in, I would have took Grizz in five. Yeah, and, and and I'm glad you said that, Tasha, because as a Grizzlies fan, you're living in the moment of watching the score go from five to ten, and like you said, it was 49 to nine. Then they go ahead and lose by ten more points than that. It was just, it was very embarrassing and humbling, but you're right. With no Steven Adams, who led the league in rebounds prior to going down, with no Brandon Clark, who was in a candidate for six men of the year before he tore his ACL, you're not going to beat an Anthony Davis-led team with no centers. No. But your, your third string forward is guarding Anthony Davis in a high pressure, high stakes playoff game. It was just a recipe for disaster. I mean, because even though I joke and call call him street clothes, because most of the time he is in his damn street clothes. Um, right. And you he, started that. Now, Mr. Glenn said you can't trust AD to stay healthy with his ligaments made of Charmin. <laughs> I didn't see Charmin until the very last second there. Do you trust this team? Going forward, did, what, what's the ceiling for the Lakers, you think? Um, I'm telling you now, if they get the Warriors, it's an L. Oh, yeah. They better hope that that, that, that Sacramento wins game seven. Even, even if they get Sacramento, I'm still not sold on them. I don't know if, if they can, because let's face it, the Grizzlies did make them look old in a couple of games this year. And even in the game four that they came back and won with LeBron with the 2020 and all that kind of stuff, Memphis blew a seven point lead with under five minutes left to go in that game. That really cost them the series. Yeah. Um, one thing that, that I would tell the Grizzlies is grow the hell up. I mean, it's not even, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, your, your leader, again, I'm not so, y'all know I'm the biggest like pessimist. I'm always going to be a glass half empty because the way I, I live my life and have always lived my life. You got to prove me wrong. Right. And, and, and that's this, it's sad that I, that I have to be that way, but over time and, and growing up being, being my big age, you've seen that people continue to let you down. So now it's kind of like, you have to prove me wrong. Right. And as much as I love job, when he's talking about, Oh, he went to this council. You went two days, dude, you went a weekend. You, you, were avoid, you were trying to avoid a uh, uh, season-ending suspension. Right. So, you know, he did everything he was supposed to do, PR-related, to, you know, be and able to... he kept to his nose clean when he came back. Yeah, for the most yeah you, haven't, you haven't heard anything from him or anything since he's come back. So maybe he did have an, an opening, uh, I mean, awakening. They do, they need to grow up. That's your leader. Your leader is out here acting like a 16, 17, 18-year-old. Right, like right. He, he, you can run the streets with your thugs, you know, like right. that's what right. he's doing. And no. then like I said, the trash talk, I'm okay with a little bit of trash talk, but you got to be able to back your trash talk up. And as I but, put and it- And if you don't back your trash talk up, own it. Don't right. run from the media. Don't run from the post-game presser because when you win, you, you're front and center. And that's more to Dylan Brooks than, than Ja. The but, Dylan Brooks, you talked all that crap. Right. The Lakers humbled you. You were the worst player on the court, not, not the worst player on the Grizzlies. You were the worst player on the court, and you did the most talking. You just cost remember, yourself a bag in the offseason. Who was the time in our, now? Remember in our, in our group chat, and I, when you were saying, you was like, no, I'm here for it, I'm here for it. And I was like, he ain't got the talent that LeBron got in his left slew foot. So he, I said, and I, what did I say? I said, he needs to tread lightly. 
Well, he didn't, and he got his ass humbled. Uh, now, I will give Ja this. Last night, well, this morning, by the time that game ended, Ja got on that podium, and he said, this is on me. My off-the-field actions hurt this team and hurt this organization. I got to do better. I got to make better decisions. I got the, What he needs now is a few months away. Get out of the limelight. Get back in the gym. Work on your outside shot because Anthony Davis showed you that as long as he's alive, you ain't getting nothing in the paint. You may have to go through that same team next year. And let's see, the Stephanie Colts is chiming in. She says, Memphis needs to understand that their work on the floor will speak for itself to get the respect they yes. deserve. Oh, excellent, excellent point. Yes, the young yeah. mentality costs them every year to a seasoned player slash team. Stephanie, you get the comment of the day. Ding, 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 because guess who put them out last year? Steph and Clay. While you out there playing around, they went on the championship. Right, right. Right. Season. They went on. Stephanie, you're preaching on that one. I'm proud of you, girl. Yeah, Tree says exactly. He he effed around and found out. Now, Dylan, I hope next time that, that you understand that um, what's a goon to a goblin? Isn't that what Lil Wayne said? <laughs> What's a million, a million, a million, a million. Right. Light skin, fake tough guys. Brooks was getting cooked. Oh, he went heel on it. He went with the shade, the shade so, of brown. So do you think the Grizz bring him back, or do you? Hell think no. Hell no. I mean, they don't. I mean, if you got if you got your other two pieces coming back, and then you got a draft coming up, you can get somebody to replace a Dylan Brooks or as some kind of trade. Right now, here's the thing about about the the, the Grizzlies and the Lakers that that we can put a nice little ball on this with. To everybody's point that you're making, and you all made great points, and, and you as well, Tasha. The Grizzlies are the second youngest team in the NBA. They are ahead of schedule. Their championship window hadn't opened yet. And losing to Steph last year and LeBron this year shows you there's levels to this. And if you're going to get humbled by anyone, I'm glad it was by LeBron James because LeBron James is a consummate professional. Whether you think he's the GOAT or not, whether you think – that he's phony or not, that he flops or not, or clutch or not. He is a professional basketball player. He came with a professional mindset. He didn't get involved in the back and forth with Dylan Brooks. He went out on the court and gave him 20 and 20 mm -hmm. instead of barking back in the media. He, he sent Memphis home in six when they were the two seed, and it lets you know that the, 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 the big dogs on the hill are still the big dogs on the hill. Look at who's left in the playoffs, Tasha. And also, when you you know we're talking about this maturity thing, and as Steph hit it when she said season, they've been here before, so they're technically seasoned. They no no they, no they're not they're not soul food seasoned though. LeBron is soul food seasoned. Okay. Steph is soul food seasoned. KD they they, 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 they Lowry's. They got that Lowry's on it. They got the way when you bite into that chicken. You taste the seasoning on, on the on the crust and on the meat. John them, they did that little Mrs. Dash and thought that they were ready to roll. They did a little air fry meal and called it Thanksgiving dinner. You can't microwave your way to a championship. It takes blood. What the Mrs. Dash? <laughs> it takes blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, G, get out of here. Right. Get that out of here, Brooks. Get out of here. They're going to get. So, like. I'm glad that it was LeBron that humbled him because he could go he could go into that locker room and say, Hey, look, young, young buck, I was you, I was 18, but you gotta be a professional if you want to knock me off. Look but at who's left in the playoffs. It, it, you had players like LeBron came out 18, mature man. Kevin Garnett came out, put mature, right, right, right. mature man. These brothers is late in twenties, early thirties, and still acting like damn children. Right, you still going to tracks and Charlie skate rink on Sunday when you need to be in the lab practicing your art. If you if you worked on your art, you know your way through the dog. Now silence, silence said Dragonfly Jones and, and Stephanie. Nice bow right here. And LeBron walked to the tunnel immediately after the win instead of celebrating on the court. Stand up, guy! Like I ain't new to this. Dang, Steph, you you podcast ready today. And, right? and he and he probably really want to get back in and get some ice on them knees. Oh, you better ice up. Ice up, son. Ain't that Steve Smith? Ice up, son. I, all right. Now, let's go to the Warriors because they have a game seven. They blew a golden opportunity last night. No pun intended.
to put away the Kings, the Sacramento Kings. Now they have a game seven tomorrow. Tasha, who do you see winning this one, the Kings or the Warriors? Man, you know I picked the Warriors, but I, I wouldn't be upset if the if the Kings pulled this thing off. <laughs> you wouldn't. Oh, I wouldn't. Be, I wouldn't either. Who would you rather see play the Lakers, the Kings or the or the Warriors? Um, I think matchup wise. Uh, are you saying me or who? You who would think you rather see? What which matchup would you rather see with Brown? I mean, I'm tired of the old school. I, I don't want to see too. another Lakers Warriors. I want to see the Kings and the Lakers. You think the Kings can finally vanquish one for Chris Webber if they get past Golden State? Yeah. Because, because you know, they all the Lakers are ass whooping. That was BS. They had Vladdy Divac. They had Chris Webber. Mike Bibby. Right. The, the, the Rebels. For Yakovic. Yeah, they had a squad. We'll, we will see. Now, there are some second round matchups to start next week. Let's start with New York in the Garden. The Garden, they, they host the Knicks. We, we get a throwback series. And it's funny that we get this series because we were just joking about them fighting back in the 90s. So they renew their rivalry. How do you see this one playing out? Jimmy Buckets was phenomenal, but the New York Knicks ran through Cleveland. Who do you got? Man, the way Jimmy Buckets is just like, hey, hey. And I remember what? my boy from Memphis, Steve. Shouts out to Steve. He's in Arizona. The mound, the mound baby. So – Steve sent me this clip of where Jimmy came to a heat practice or was it a, he came to a practice one day and he had on the Minnesota Timberwolves stuff. He cut out the Timberwolves. So he was there with his chest out. He cut all the Timberwolves. He just had the wolf on there. So make a long story short, they was practicing and all of a sudden Jimmy disappears. Jimmy gives an interview at home. <laughs> they still have practice. <laughs> Jimmy went home. To give his interview because he was basically like, I did what I needed to do, which is basically I'm carrying them. Let me let me fill in the, the missing piece on that story that made it so funny. Jimmy Butler was playing with Carl Anthony Towns with the Minnesota Timberwolves at the time, and he was calling Towns soft. He got so mad that he went and played with the backups and beat the starters. Right. That's when he went home. And, and went that. home. He's like, no, y'all trash. <laughs> He went, but he cut the Timberwolves out the, the shirt part. Oh, Lord. My nephew said he's rooting for Golden State. And Carter, we'll talk about that after the show. No, we can't root for Golden State. They cause us too much pain. Four rings is enough. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, what's, what was that with the Knicks? Didn't somebody tell that ACL or something? Oh, it was um, it, it was Julius Randle. He had another ankle injury, so he's questionable for tomorrow's game. And he ain't no early Willis game, 12 he, noon tip-off. Shout out R.I.P. to Willis Reed. He ain't going to come out that tunnel. But, I, oh, this was a tough one because you got – I don't – man, I don't like to root against Jimmy Buckets, but the Knicks are still kind of young at this. Like we said, that young, that inexperienced. And Jalen Brunson is playing like a, a first-team yeah. All-NBA Oh, I don't know, dog. But you got to put it on wax now. Put it on paper. Who you got? He's got papers on me. <laughs> oh, damn. My heart is rooting with the Knicks, but I'm going I'm to go with the heat on this. If I had to bet the, the light bill, I ain't putting it against Jimmy Buckets after what he did to Giannis. And speaking of Giannis, you saw the failure talk, right? Can you, can you give me a quick word on that? Talking about Jordan played, uh, got six rings, but he played 15 years. Is he a failure? And was this a failure? Was this a failure on the part of the Bucks and Giannis this year? It's a difference between a failure because you didn't reach something and a failure in your career. They're okay with taking an L. They're okay with, with saying, okay, we lost. But when you throw failure in there, everybody gets sensitive. Because this is the participation trophy era. Now, what did my friend Steve, he was like, wait a minute, hold on. He said, I can get and understand his overall message, but we weren't asking about overall career life, just right. this NBA season. Right. And it was a failure. It was a failure. You were the, the over, number one overall seed and the favorite to reach the finals, and you get knocked out by a team that was in the play-in. They, I mean, they lost the first play-in game. I and mean, and, and still and, turn around and beat y'all in five games. Right. So in essence, it was a failure. And then, and then what he also said, he said, "Folks love Kobe, 
He says, and I find it hard to believe in the same position. Kobe wouldn't call this season a failure. Well, and, and here's the thing. It was a failure. And there's a difference between failing and being a failure. Right. They failed this year. Now, we're not calling Giannis a failure in well, life. No way. No way you can call that man a right. failure. But you failed. You you had a goal and you failed to reach it. What is wrong with that? Like, like Giannis, to turn around, did you get a promotion? Did you get a promotion? Did, 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 are you a failure? No, this ain't about me. You just got whooped by Jimmy Buckets. I mean, even even old Gerald Jones will say, when he always goes out there Super Bowl or bus, even he gets out there and says, we fail. Now, now Uncle Langston the end of the chat. Natasha... Mike ain't here to defend us. We're not having this slander. Did you miss our segment on how good Mozzie Smith is? Did you miss our segment on Shoemaker being better? See, he than did. Trump? He did because he was being, he's being grandpa with your cute little grandbaby right there. Now, he's I the gave first, y'all, y'all props. Adorable, but this I, is, we got to stop this. I gave y'all y'all props, Langston. I'm pulling for y'all this year. I said, you said it was, Tasha said it was a good draft and she's a 49er. Now, look, we don't forgave you, bro. Right. Now, I don't forgave you. You was just being a man. Right. That's a good one. <laughs> Come on, Langston. Shout out to the Cowboys. That was an excellent first two days of the draft. Now, Tasha, we got Joel B, the, the presumptive MVP, going up against last year's Eastern Conference champions in the Boston Celtics. I've been waiting on this one. I've been waiting on this one. Who you got? I'm going with Boston. Over, over Wakanda forever? First of all, he's injured. He, he, he's, he borderline street. We got a whole bunch of honorable border, uh, borderline uh, street clothes mentions coming in. Right, right. He's borderline street clothes. Right. Well, we're going to call him jumpsuit because he ain't quite put on the jeans yet. He still got on his warm-ups on. We'll call him warm-ups. So him being always injured, then you got Harden out there fighting folks in Vegas. Why are you in Vegas, Dennis Rodman? Y'all in the play. I know y'all come on, Tasha, answer your own question. Why was he in Vegas? You wanna? That's cool, but you gotta be the greatest. Take me the product, buy me the latest, charter the jet, fly me to Vegas. Hey. The bad bitch. Can't that? Come on, Trina. <laughs> right, he's out there looking for the baddest chick. You know what he's doing in Vegas. So you so you got Boston how many games? Ooh, this one's going to be a good one, though. I think this is going to go, ooh. You gonna, you gonna, you think this is a seven-burger? Yeah, because this is two. Because Philly hasn't lost in the playoffs so far. Right. It's two It's two talented teams, and you had uh, the, the, the Hawks taking Boston to the to the Shad House out yep. back. So. Yep. Ice Trey was on that ass. <laughs> Okay, so I, I'm taking the, the, the 76ers in this one. Atlanta a- Atlanta being on Boston like that, there's just something about them. There's a lack of size and physicality to me. Uh, and I love Tyrese Maxey and Doc Rivers. You need to get one more, man, because you're still living off that 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 big three from the from the Celtics. We, we need to get you one more. Okay. Now, your boy, KD, who's been flying under the radar, if that's the such thing that KD can do, now they put away the Koalas Clippers. Now they get Jokic, the top dog tonight, starting tonight, out there in the in the rarefied air in Denver. Who you got? You got uh, Jokic or are you going with KD? Of course I'm going with KD. How many games does it take them to get rid of the number one seed? Man, look, I'm going to call this one. I'm going to say it's going to be a sweep. I'm going to say it. Ladies and gentlemen, if this is a sweep, Y'all just better. I'm just telling y'all right now. We're gonna do a, a greatest hits the, of all Tasha's picks because she nailed the Minnesota was was selling wolf tickets. Uh, she said street clothes was gonna do us in us being the Grizzlies. She now she said, look, she done forgave you Cowboys fans. She said you had a good pick to go on up the street with that, and she said the KD about to get the sweep. I got the Phoenix Suns as well. Don't know about a sweep, but I got to do with that. Who they got? I heard KD walked out of the Grizzlies game last night. Well, he had time. He don't play till tonight, so we shall see. Um, so just to just to reiterate, so everybody know where Tasha stands. Tasha has Phoenix in four. I got Phoenix in six. She has the Heat beating the Knicks. I'm gonna go with the Heat as no. You know what? Let me go with the Knicks. 
I'm, I'm gonna get him some good mojo. There you go, trying to lock it up like we playing spades. Right. She's got Boston over Philly. I got Philly over Boston. And let's just let's just say this: Do the Lakers advance no matter who they play? No. Uh, Sacramento, or I think I got the Lakers going out. But and, but it's gonna be good that they did close out last night. So this way, the series will what, start Tuesday. LeBron is Superman. The way he, like how he bounced back from game five to game six, like I, 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 it wouldn't surprise me if he had another virtual soul. And as long as street clothes stays out of street clothes, I think they got a chance to go all the way. I mean, because earliest, earliest game will be Tuesday. Wednesday may be a stretch. So they'll, you know. Right. He has right. to and, have and, rest. And, because and the Golden State, is- don't go out there and play with your food. Sacramento trying to beat you. Sacramento, Sacramento's <laughs> – they take they gonna take, blood. They, they gonna take your cornbread because they know it. They know a bitch that uh named Della that hit harder than you. So right, okay. And part two of my killer spree gonna get here on your. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tasha. It is time for your top five in honor of the draft. We're gonna go with T Sizzle's top five number one draft picks in the NFL over the last twenty five years. The floor is yours, my dad. Now, these are these are kind of random. Like, you're going to be like, where did this come from? It's your list. So, I have John Elway. Okay. Simply because of the move he pulled when it came time to, for him to get drafted, which kind of goes back to the Eli Manning. To say They kind of did an Elway because he said, if y'all draft me, I'm going back to school. Right. <laughs> I ain't gonna play. Right, I'm going back to Stanford. But 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 that draft was one of the best drafts of all time. It also had Eric Dickinson going in that draft and Dan Marino. Go ahead. So the next one I have coming off the list, I have Michael Vick. Okay, the the Vick experience goes down in the ATL simply because it's, it was Michael Vick. I mean, he turned out to be good. You know, he had a little issue with dogs and whatnot. But, but he Mike, came back and revived his career in a, in a fantastic way, and he's still a media member talking about football every year. So, shouts out to him. And the next one, and the only reason why I'm putting this here, because this is very, very random. The only reason why I'm putting this cat in here is because of I listened to him on the Pivot podcast. Okay. I got Jamarcus Russell. Why? Simply because... Nobody was expecting anyone like Jamarcus Russell to be in that position. He's Buster Douglas. Yeah. He he you said number one. You didn't say career. <laughs> you said my draft picks. Now well, like you said, it is your list. Oh now, now look who look who woke up. <laughs> now do I you believe want an explanation for that? Now do I believe everything he was saying? No. And uh, you got caught sipping on some scissor. And right. that's really why you ain't why you ain't in the league. One of the most underrated bangers of all time, by the way. Sip, sipping on some scissor. Sip, sipping on some sip, sipping on some scissor. Sip, sipping. Can, can I let that? Eat so many shrimp. I got I that pork. Come on, pimp man. Oh wait, a minute. he said dude was like Odom, like Lamar Odom. Uh, or, but again, are you about y'all are the, saying draft, not career. Right. Okay. Draft. No, it's your list. Rock your list. I think he was talking about Odom from Ohio State. So next, I got one, Mr. Miles Garrett. Okay, he did bang a couple of folks over the head with a helmet. That's neither here nor there. No, that's here and there. That was huge. He is one of the best defensive players out there. He's playing in Cleveland with some called a mistake by the late. He's doing phenomenal things. And he can do a 360 windmill dunk. Yes. So lastly, even though this really hasn't like panned out the way that we thought things are, again, this is draft. I'm going to go with Mr. Sunshine himself, Trevor Lawrence. Take that back. We need him to fail, damn it. I mean, season one, when he had old uh, Urban Liar, right. Urban Myth, as his coach, I do believe coaching played a part in that because he was held. Oh yeah, back. oh yeah. The the same roster looked totally different when he left. Second season, because he was my backup QB in fantasy. Him and Jalen Hurts every week got me at least 40, 40 or more points. At least forty. At least forty. <laughs> oh, 
points. And I just think that was a good pick. And, and, and he gets Calvin Ridley out for suspension this year. Yes. Ooh. So yeah, Sunshine Ooh. gonna be gonna be some count. Like yeah, I said, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just oh, thought they, Jamar they Russell was just intriguing to me because of the way he failed. Because you had so much handed to you, you we were rooting for you, as Tyra Banks said. Right. And you here you go. You you, you got here people mismanaging your money. You're out right. here sipping on scissor on lean. Right. You just couldn't get it together. Isn't it, uh, isn't it kind of an uh, oxymoron that lean makes you gain so much weight? I, I, I digress. All right. Well, you know the lean make you lean. <laughs> lean make you lean back. I mean, it's it's codeine, it's some candy, it's a little Kool Aid. None of that shit good for you. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. Um, I, I want to, as far as first round, uh, number one overall picks. One of my favorites was Cam Newton because of everything that happened to him prior to him getting drafted, then getting drafted and living up to the number one hype. I thought that was um a, a great one. Um, Peyton Manning. Number one pick. I thought that was that was pretty legit. And and also one more because I think he was one of the most overrated uh, number one picks in Hall of Famers of all time. And, and Tasha, I need you to sit up when I say this one because you ain't gonna believe this. Troy Aikman. I had Troy. I I did have Cam and Troy on on. There. But Troy Aikman is on there because he should not have been. He was not the best player in that draft. That was he Barry was. Sanders. That was um that was Deion Sanders. And he was the beneficiary of three Super Bowl titles. But if you go back and look at his numbers, I believe in 93, he had 28 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. I mean, <laughs> but it had you taken one of those players, the whole trajectory of the Cowboys as we know it would not have been as such. I think you could have had a, 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 a fair to Midland quarterback play and Emmy Smith in that offensive line and that defense with Haley and, 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 all of those guys that went to the Hall of Fame, that Hall of Fame offensive line, I think anybody could have thrown the ball to Michael Irving. I think anybody could have handed that ball off to, to Emmy Smith. Uh, Deion Sand I mean, Deion Sanders and Barry Sanders had better careers. But but if you had Barry Sanders, you wouldn't have had no Emmett. Even though I think Barry Sanders is the greatest. But but Emmett was good for what they did in that, that yeah. era. I was just thinking that he got a lot out of now. He go Mike Ch so Levi could turn out to be an Aikman. Well, I would hope so. That means I got three rings. No. And, and don't you start, Michigan Mike. He ain't got the line. They ain't got the line in Titans to support But that. we got the running back. We got the running back. Man, that running back is 137 years old. We got the running back. You knew I was going to find something to do with this damn crown. We kept, hey, can we get a round of applause for keeping Derrick Henry one more year? Round of applause. Let me make that clap. Hey. Drop it to the floor, make that. Hey, hey. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right. Tell us who you shouting out this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shouting out my friend. His name is Corey. Corey um, had gained a phenomenal amount. I mean, when I, not even phenomenal. It was he, he was two steps from being on my 600-pound life. Oh, wow. Uh, Corey went through a divorce. Uh, and Corey was... Corey's about 6'5", but Corey was probably about 450 pounds. Oh, wow. Corey yeah. underwent a gastric bypass, lost all his weight. He did everything he was supposed to be. Corey, three weeks ago, got his full body surgery to remove skin and everything. Y'all tell me why this man riding around these streets of the Dominican Republic like he ain't just get snatched. I'm proud because I didn't think that Corey had the discipline to do what he was supposed to do after his gastric bypass and even with his surgery. The doctor did clear him because he was in the Capitol. Okay. So, shout out to my boy Corey. Him and, and Cesar are on their he way. Said, I'm oh, yeah, but that's what he did. That's what he said. Steph, why he called me last night? Sis, I'm outside. And I said, boy, if you don't take your ass back in with a drain still in you. It's exactly what I told him. But he's doing, I, t I told him, I said, you're going to, I said, you're going to F around and have a setback. I said, you better sit down. So, shouts out to my boy, Corey. He's going, he's from Maryland, DC area, DMV. He will be going back next week. But the doctor did clear him because he had to come up here and handle some business before he goes back to the cap. So, shouts out to my boy, Corey. 
All right. I want to give a, a shout out to uh, Tasha T. Sizzle on the Michigan mic for for gracing us with a with a, one of our, our rare night performances for the draft show. That was fantastic. Um, now, Stephanie, I don't know what that means, but I guess Tasha does. He's going to get tangled up with a plantain. Um, also, I want to give a shout out to my brother from another mother, Mr. Drew Merriman. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Drew. Oh, happy birthday, Drizzo. Another year around the sun. And, and as Tasha alluded to earlier in the show, happy graduation day to the University of Michigan. You know, get that right there. The University of Michigan. That's how we do. All right, right. Happy birthday, Drew Diddy. Uh, stay out of trouble. Do something with the family today. This is a wife and kids Saturday, Drew. All right. Um, and on that note, we're about to get up out of here. We got some sports to watch. On behalf of T. Sizzle, it's your boy P.O. Coulter. We'll see y'all in six days and 23 hours. Send us out with a little song. You got a little song for us, T. Sizzle? You, uh, Just do the diddy diddy if you want to because damn, I can sing if I want to. Hey, that's a skate rink song. Hey, go ahead, gangster walk with us out here. We out of here, y'all. Peace. Gangsta line on that. You know.